Sí. I think it's safe to say that colleges are no longer seen as these liberal bastions uh, of these liberal bash, these liberal paradises that conservatives seem to think they are. There has been massive protests for the, I think it's going to, I think it's the four, four nights in a row where Columbia students have been protesting about what's going on in Gaza. But unfortunately, Columbia has also been arresting students for merely protesting. I want to start off with uh, this has been going on for a while, but it's been coming more to a head uh, in the last few months, especially since October 7th. There was a young woman that was slated to give the valedictorian speech in uh, USC. Let me see. Okay. The young woman, uh, Asna Tabasum, was slated to actually give her valedictorian speech. She was held back from giving the valedictorian speech because she is Muslim. So I want to go into that first, and then we'll go into Colombia. Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez and I interviewed Asna Tabasum, who is a first-generation South Asian American Muslim, on Wednesday. I began by welcoming her to Democracy Now! Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So why don't you give us the chronology of what happened? I mean, to be the valedictorian of this elite university, the University of Southern California, is such an enormous achievement. Can you talk about when you learned you'd become the valedictorian and when you learned during commencement call, I believe, in the second week of March or so. It was during Ramadan, and I was incredibly happy to receive the honor and incredibly grateful. And that was the moment I also knew that I would have the chance and the opportunity to address my peers during commencement. And uh, when did you hear the uh, that the university had changed its mind, and uh, who contacted you? Of course. So I was contacted by the administration on Monday, actually, this past Monday, shortly before the statement was released, that I would unfortunately no longer be allowed to give the commencement address for the class of 2024. How typical is that, Asna? Does the valedictorian always give the speech? Yes. As far as I know in history of the U.S., and in fact, I asked the provost this himself, um, you know, has this ever happened to a USC valedictorian? And in fact, I think we both agreed that to the best of our knowledge, it has never happened before. And what exactly did he say when he explained to you it was for safety reasons? Did he talk about, talk to you about what the threats are? My question is safety for whom? Safety for her? Ask these questions, y'all. 
So that's exactly the question here is that I received no details as to what the security threats or what the security concerns were. You know, I heard that there were hundreds and thousands of emails sent to the university, but I was given no clue as to what the contents of these emails were, as well as, for example, um, the university had said that there were other security concerns in relation to having a big event such as commencement, but you know, even details there were unclear. And so when I had asked for details regarding the security concerns, for example, were they security concerns about me or my classmates, I was offered no information and was told it was not appropriate for me to know. Now, were you aware that pro-Israel student groups had, uh, were targeting you on, uh, on social media, that a group called We Are Tav posted a photo of you on its Instagram account and claimed that you were, quote, openly, that you openly promote anti-Semitic writings? It's honestly heartbreaking, yes. I, once I was shortly, and once I was announced on social media through USC student media, it only took a few hours before such posts began circulating. And it, it launched a very generalized and honestly very hateful and disappointing campaign to remove me as valedictorian, yes. I want to go to... Um... So, ultimately, it was Zionists. They didn't want her to speak. If it had been anybody else that wasn't Muslim, that was valedictorian, this wouldn't be an issue. To me, uh, sounds like Islamophobia. Sounds like hatred, right? So that's what happened with her. And in doing so, this is causing a lot of colleges now to be questioned, especially when it comes uh, college uh, presidents to be in regards to their views on free speech, their views uh, on how speech is handled within these universities. So the president of Columbia was actually asked about anti-Semitism at a House committee. And so let's take a look here. A mob shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free or long live the Imtada. Are those anti-Semitic comments? When I hear those terms, I find them very upsetting. And I have heard. It is not anti-Semitic, by the way. Number one, Palestinians are Semites. So it's not anti-Semitic. Number two, to want freedom from occupation How is freedom from occupation considered upsetting, but being an occupier is somehow okay? Let's go back and hear, you know, to what she, what she said. Go back just a couple of seconds. Yes. 
When I hear those terms, I find them very upsetting. And I have heard... That's a great answer to a question I didn't ask, so let me repeat the question. When mobs or people are shouting, from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free, or long live the infantata, are those anti-Semitic statements? Yes or no? It's not how you feel, it's... I hear them as such, some people don't. Ma'am, it's clear that you are folding to pressure from Zionists. Wow. We have sent so a clear yes? message. So are mobs shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, or long live the infantata? Are those anti-Semitic comments? When I So, yeah, the president of Colombia definitely, definitely dropped the ball on that one. But that's because that the presidents of these universities are being driven by Zionists. Um, and so... Here is what they've been doing against the Palestinian students. I'm sorry, the, the students who've been protesting for Palestine. This is from Code Pink. It says, for months, Colombia's administration have been repressing and punishing students organizing for justice in Palestine. After Congress pushed the university president to crack down even harder yesterday, they're sending the NYPD to shut down students' solidarity encampment. And so here is that video. My question is, do they have free speech or not? Do these students have it? Because if these students actually have free speech, then the need for police to come out there is really unnecessary, at least in my eyes. So last week, there was well over 100 pro-Palestine protesting students at Columbia that were arrested. It says Columbia University protest over 100 pro-Palestine demonstrators, including Representative Ilhan Oman's daughter, was arrested. Because more than 100 pro-Palestinian protesters at Columbia University were arrested on Thursday afternoon in an on-campus tent encampment was removed after the school's president gave New York Police Department the green light to clear the protesters. The demonstrators have occupied Columbia's South Lawn for over 30 hours in violation of the university's rules and did not leave despite numerous warnings. Says Columbia President Nimat uh, Minouche uh, Safik announced in a letter to the Columbia community Thursday that she has authorized the New York Police Department to clear demonstrators from campus. Said this morning, I had to make a decision that I hope would never be necessary. Quote, I regret that all these attempts to resolve the situation were rejected by students involved. As a result, NYPD officers are now on campus and the process of clearing the encampment is underway. She said, I have always said that our safety of our community was my top priority, and that we need to preserve the environment where everyone could learn in a supportive context, end quote. So this is what happened. Uh, Isra Hirsi, 
The daughter of Representative Ilhan Omar was among those arrested for trespassing. It will be getting a summons. So it says here, she so said that she was among several students suspended from Columbia University for participating in pro-Palestine protests, a development that emerged a day after her mother and other members of the House Committee on Education and the Workforce grilled the school's president about growing anti-Semitism on the campus. So we're going to take a look at that, too, because I think that's also really important uh, to take a look at what was questioning. the same Columbia president. So let's take a look at that. And just as a reminder, Ilhan Omar has been accused of being anti-Semitic as well. I wanted to get a clarification earlier. One of my colleagues asked you, have you seen anti-Muslim protests on campus? I have seen we have we have had pro-Israeli demonstrations on campus. No, no, no. But Arabs. No, I have not. Have you seen one against Palestinians? No, I have not. Have you seen against one against Jewish people? Have you seen a protest no. saying we are against Jewish people? No, I have I have seen Okay, thank no, you. Thank oh. So she haven't. So what's the problem? Because according to her, and according to the last House committee member, she asked if they're chanting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free and long live the Antifada. That's considered to be to her to be anti-Semitic. If that's the case, then wouldn't that classify as an anti-Jewish protest? But she just told Ilhan Omar, well, no, I haven't seen any anti-Jewish protests. So which one is it? Apparently, she only said yes because guess what? She folded. She folded under pressure. Because truth be told, I, saying that is not anti-Semitic. Let's continue. Thank you for that clarification. There has been a rise in targeting and harassment against anti-war protesters because it's been pro-war and anti-war protesters is what it seems like, correct? Correct. There has okay. been. Okay. Thank you. Um, activists on campus, including Jewish students, black and brown, Arab and Muslim students. How many of the organizations that were canceled in Colombia involved Jewish students? One of the organizations is called Jewish Voices for Peace. Yes. And encompassed of Jewish students? Yes. Okay. Thank you. There was a. So, yes, they actually canceled a Jewish group called Jewish Voices for Peace that were protesting on behalf of Palestinians. So, when it comes to Jewish voices, if they're pro Israeli, they get to stay. But if they're pro Palestine, that's when they get canceled. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this up, man. Um, on the democratic rights uh, of students across the country, I was appalled to learn that in April, Colombia suspended and evicted six students for their involvement in the pro-Palestinian panel event on campus. It happened that all six students were arbitrarily targeted after the university brought in a team of private and former police investigators. 
these investigators harassed, intimidated Palestinian students at their homes, demanding to see students' private text messages, and sent threatening emails to the leaders of those pro-Palestinian groups. I would like to ask you to speak a little bit more to this uh, situation and um, ask you if, you've, if you guys have utilized private uh, former police investigators before, or is this the first time? So this was a very serious case. Uh, we had uh, students who on an online you inciting violence, and that is unacceptable. And so we needed to get to the bottom of it, and so that's why we brought private investigators how, along how, with notifying How the secure FBI. were you, these students that you evicted and suspended were involved? Did you do any investigation? Was there a hearing? Did they refuse to cooperate with the investigation. And so until they do so, they are suspended. Okay, uh, thank you. And then in January, there was an uh, um, there was an incident involving students that were protesting that were attacked. Many hospitalized, um, a lot of them uh, I did not receive support from uh, the school administrators. Can you speak to what is happening with the investigation, uh, if you all are um, cooperating, and why weren't the students provided any support after they've experienced that attack? Mm. So we, this is still with the police, uh, and uh, as far as we know, it was an, we think it was an odorous substance, uh, and and we did reach out to all of those students who said they were affected. Many of them didn't want support. We also It, it took out you guys more than four days to reach out to students. No, I don't believe that's correct. Okay, actually. will you respond, I, uh, give me a written response with the fact that you all responded right away? To those, it looks like there's been um, a lot of doxing and, and harassment. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, guys. Twitter. Uh, that that has taken place. What protections are a student being provided? We created a doxing resources group to support students. There were many students who were affected by this. Muslim students, Jewish students, and completely, you know, other students. Uh, that group has, uh, we had 90 students reach out to that group to get support in terms of both technical support, legal support, privacy scrubbing, and so on. And before uh, I run out of time, I wanted uh, to ask what what do, what do your rules say about professors that harass students online, um, like Professor Shai Davidar has done, um, and professors who directly attack you as the president, as a coward and a liar? So as president, I'm used to being attacked, uh, but attacking our students is unacceptable. And in that case, uh, we've had more than 50 complaints about that professor, mm -hmm. uh, and he is currently under investigation okay. of, for harassment. What about harassing him via police? It's kind of funny how that's never taken into context. So yes, they actually were attack really by the university this is actually oh gosh this is actually out of the times of israel it says columbia university suspends jewish voices for peace students for justice in palestine it says school cites infractions culminating in unauthorized event that included threatening rhetoric and intimidation Jewish Voices for Peace and Students for Justice in Palestine have held events accusing Israel of genocide in Gaza, which is true. This was back in November. It says suspension runs through the end of the fall semester, about six more weeks, and marks a significant crackdown 
by the school, by the two groups and campuses nationwide have erupted in debate, activism and occasional violence surrounding the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. By the way, uh, well, like we have said before many, many times, it is not a war. You have one of the most powerful nuclear armies in the world that is fighting a paramilitary group. It is not a, a war with the note that is two equal opposing sides. There is not two equal opposing sides. Israel is the one that has been lambasting Palestine, particularly Gaza and Rafa, this entire time and have killed, I would assume it's more than 40,000 now. So it has been, uh, it has been way more than the 1,200 or so that were attacked on October 7th. So it's not a war. It's a genocide. It's an ethnic cleansing. But they don't want to say that. So it says this decision was made after the two groups repeatedly violated university policies relating to holding campus events, culminating in an unauthorized event Thursday afternoon that proceeded despite warnings and included threatening rhetoric and intimidation. And so when they say threatening rhetoric and intimidation, a lot of times it's usually, well, oh my God, they're saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And you got some Zionists that get all uh, their knees knocking and going, oh my God, they're threatening us when in fact they're not threatening them at all. I'm going to give you guys an example of thinking that is threatening when in reality, they're not threatening them at all. Let me share this with you guys too. Ah, here we go. Now, I know we're outside of the award show era, but we got to give this young lady an Oscar because, well, <laughs> She she really like put her heart and soul into that performance. She put her heart and soul into it, and now whew, says this video of some college students literally crying crocodile tears because their pro-Palestinian demonstrating happened. They hysterically demand that the security guards go arrest them all. Perfectly encapsulates Zionism and its depraved cult of fake victimhood. So let's take a look. And the award goes to. Hello! They want our people dead! They want us killed! <laughs> They want him dead. Please end it, please. <laughs> Why can't they just go up and do Oh my God! While I have my camera, Macchiato, they want us dead. Oh my goodness! I'm suffering right now. Can't you see? I'm suffering right now. No, it doesn't have regular milk. It has oat milk. Oh my gosh! Meanwhile, there are kids, babies that are literally being saved out of their mother's womb because their mothers are dead right now. And she gets to sit there with her Starbucks and cry about how, oh my God, they want us dead because they actually want the Palestinians to get their land back. She 
You see how it works, right? Also, I'm going to say this. I hope some of y'all don't get offended. But one of the most dangerous substances in this world, it's not lava, it's not hydrochloric acid, it's not broken glass. One of the most dangerous substances in this world is the tears of a white woman. It is. And here she's using her crocodile tears to stop people from peacefully protesting. With Starbucks in hand. <laughs> so that's the people who feel threatened. Meanwhile, the three young Palestinian men, college students in Burlington, Vermont, were shot, shot, and nearly killed. One was paralyzed. And how many? Arab and Muslim students are saying, oh, my God, they're, they want us gone. How many of them are saying that? Did anybody, everybody, did anybody ever bring up about the six-year-old Muslim boy, Palestinian boy, that was stabbed 26 times in Chicago? Has anybody talked about that since? Are we going to talk about Excuse me. Ooh. We're going to talk about whose lives are threatened. Let's be honest. Now, I'm not saying that real anti Semitism does not exist, it does. There are a lot of white people that are using this as a means to be truly, actually anti-Semitic. Anti Calling for the freedom of Palestinians is not one of those. The real anti-Semites don't like Jews or Muslims. They don't like Jewish people or Arabs. Those are real anti-Semites. So I think it's important that we take that into consideration. But we also have to be very careful to not, to not mix Zionism and Judaism. Judaism is a religion. Zionism is a political ideology. We have to be careful also when it comes to talking about this issue Make sure that we point the finger at Zionists, not all Jews, okay? Because there are a lot of Jewish people that also are against the illegal occupation and apartheid that's happening too. You have groups like Jewish Voices for Peace. That are also fighting against what's going on. So, sure that we keep that in mind too. You have to be careful because we do not want to fight or put in danger our comrades that are also against this colon settler colonial state who happen to be Jewish, right? Got to be careful with that. This is why I make the distinction. So let me share this also with you guys too.
just to let you guys know. So it's almost 3 p.m. right now, but I just want to share this with you guys while I have you all here. This is from the People's Forum. It says, the students at Columbia says spark that ignited a movement for Palestine everywhere, and we will keep going. The movement only continues to grow. New York City, join us tomorrow, which is today, April 21st at 12 p.m. That's about three hours ago at the gates of Columbia University to join with the brave students who are paving the way for justice at 115th and Broadway. There are student organizing campus and encampments and mobilizations sparking a flame with momentum for a liberate, liberated Palestine all over the world. Palestine will be free. So this is what is happening. So if you're in New York or the tri-state area, that's where they are right now. So if you guys decide to leave watching the stream and go, I understand. But this is growing. And by growing, I mean it is growing, baby. And it's very promising to see things like this because, you know, hell, even Ilhan Omar's daughter was out there. Let's just share that really quick. Look, even Ilhan Omar's daughter She was suspended because she dared speak out against what's going on in Palestine. So a lot of people have been paying more attention to what's going on in places like Columbia University. Let me let me go here. In fact, let me let me go here. So who showed up? Well, here we go. Christian Smalls. The Amazon Union president decided and so he's he was there. Uh, there's more people who attended that is you know that's growing uh, the protests. That's going there at Columbia University. Uh, and I, quite frankly, I, I, I love to see it. Uh, as you know, and as much as, you know, some people may not like some of the moves that he made on the campaign trail. You know, I have to give credit to where credit is due. Dr. Cornell West also showed up to Columbia University. So yes, Dr. Cornell West was there. I have to give credit to him for that because that means a lot for a lot of people, right? Uh, so he was there as well. I'm hoping uh, if Dr. Jill Stein made it out there. If she did, then that's great too. Um, there's another uh, person that made it out there as well. Ah, here we go. Also in attendance was the queen of the universe herself and beloved <laughs> actress, Susan Sarandon. So she was also out as well. 
I say queen of the universe because uh, apparently she got a lot of blame a few years back. And so we've been calling her, you know, uh, queen goddess since then. So, you know, she's been pretty based on a lot of different subjects and a lot of different things. So let's hear what she has to say. There are many, many people. There are many, many people who stand with you. Who stand with you. You must know that you inspire so many people. You must know that you inspire so many people. People who are afraid. People who are afraid. People who are old and afraid. People who are old and afraid are looking to you. Are looking to you and your voices. And your voices. And your organization. And your organization. And your tenacity. And your tenacity. And your kindness. And your kindness to make a difference in this situation. To make a difference in this situation. You give me hope. You give me hope. To me and so many people. To me and so many people. And in the end, the truth will win. And in the end, the truth will win. So there she is, Susan Sarandon, there and accounted for it. I absolutely love to see it. Uh, by the way, that Simpsons jacket was fire. I got it. I wish I can tell her that myself. That Simpson jacket was fire, though. Uh, but yes. Um, and then also friend to the channel, Professor Anthony Zinkus also posted this as well. I think Savvy had him on, on, on Friday evening. I wasn't able to catch it because I had dialysis, but he was there as well. This is what he showed. I promise you. I promise you. History will remember you. History will remember you. Great students. Great students. Who stood up? Who stood up? For children in Gaza. For children in Gaza. For mothers in Gaza. For mothers in Gaza. For fathers in Gaza. For fathers in Gaza. I promise you. I promise you. The brave people in Gaza. The brave people in Gaza. So thank you very much to Professor Zinkis for that. Uh, and let me share this as well. So here's what the government, uh, the government puppets are saying. This really smacked me. It was, yeah, it's horrible. Israel is a critical ally of ours and I think most people understand the necessity of this funding. They're fighting for their very existence. They're the only stable democracy in the Middle East. I mean, of course, there's, for those of us who are believers, it's a biblical admonition to stand with Israel. We will, and, and they will prevail as long as they're, they're with them. And this is an important, very important symbolic gesture and a very important replenishment of their stockpiles, for example, of the Iron Dome. The reason they shot down all those drones and missiles uh, in the last attack by Iran is because we assisted with that. I think the American people understand the importance of that. Isn't there supposed to be a separation between church and state? Why are we going by biblical admonitions? This is the Speaker of the House, y'all. They're literally trying to turn the United States into a theocracy. Same thing as Israel. Israel is essentially a a settler colonial ethno state. And he's not the only one. Here's another one. This guy goes just full ham. It's pretty clear it was the covenant that God made with Abraham. And uh, that covenant was real clear. Uh, if you bless Israel, I will bless you. If you curse Israel, I will curse you. And then in the New Testament, it was confirmed that all nations would be blessed through you. So you, you do not know about that. I have heard that now that you've explained okay. it. Yes, I so have heard it, that it's before. It's now familiar. Uh, do you consider that a serious issue? 
I mean, do you want Columbia University to be cursed by God of the Bible? <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. What if she's not a Christian? What if she doesn't believe in the Abrahamic God? Then you can't believe that they can be there nor blessed nor cursed. Because you dare allow a genocide to continue? See what happens when you don't separate church and state? See what happens? They will use their religion as a means for justifying genocide. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Now, what's the one Colombian University? around the world. And so I want to share also other locations that are also happening right now uh, at different universities. So Columbia is spreading its influence and a lot of people are now starting to see that we need to get out in the streets. Here's Yale. If you leave tonight, will you come back tomorrow and resume your protest? That's good. So it's up to you. It's your decision. No, no shame either way. But I, I might ask someone in this scenario, what do we tell the trustees? So they're getting together at Yale. Uh, and I also want to share another university where they're getting together at as well. Let me see. Ah, here it is. And also in London. So this is says University College London students on the March for Palestine to process UCL's complicity with the Israeli military in a genocidal attack on Gaza. They say money and jobs for, for education, not war and occupation. So here they go. So that's what's also going on even in London. So a lot of this has been happening all over. Uh, I also forgot to mention that Professor Norm Finkelstein also showed up to give support to the students at Columbia. It is uh, harrowing to see as uh, so many people are now waking up and a lot of students, a lot of these you know, young people are waking up to what's going on. And so much so that it's really freaking out a lot of the Zionists. The Zionists are like, oh my God, I thought that they were with the state of Israel and reality, we're with the oppressed. So this guy is named Dr. Eli Davis says, uh, he's quoting the students and he says, students at Columbia openly chant for genocide of Jews in Israel. That is absolutely not true. That is a lie. Eli David is full of crap when he says that because ultimately they want the Palestinians to be free. 
Just because you're asking for freedom of a people doesn't mean you're asking for the extermination of another. So, yeah. So that's what's going on around the country, nationwide, what's going on around the world, all because of what the students at Columbia dared to do. They dared to say, no, we are not to stand for genocide while this continuously happens. And I just got to say, I am actually very proud because you have to have the guts to be able to do this. You have to have the guts to be able to stand up to the powers that be. Uh, shout out to Status Quo for this footage because ultimately, like, this is what these kids have been enduring uh, in these college campuses in order to bring to light what's been going on. Free, free college. I'm just standing here. Why are you doing this to me? What are you doing? For what reason? I'm just standing here. Protectors of capital strike again, but you have to stand up, and that's what these kids are doing. So, shout out to the students at Columbia, students at Yale, and I just want to say that you guys are doing the damn thing and bringing attention to what's going on. Now, with that being said. There was a speech that I showed, that I shared Friday? I think it might have been Friday. That I think is deeply important to show a piece of. Because a there was a speech given by a doctor at Spelman college, which is an HBCU. And this speech knocked me uh, Her name is Dr. Ruha Benjamin. I shared this on my channel uh, yesterday, but it bears repeating that everything she said is absolutely on point. And so I was so happy I clipped uh, about the last minutes of her speech because I think it is important that we talk about this. So let me share this. And I think you guys are going to absolutely love this as well. So 
So this is 2001 Spelman College valedictorian. Dr. Ruha Benjamin gives the 2024 convocation speech. This is the ending where she speaks about black faces in high places won't save us. Solidarity with all oppressed people is reflected in this speech. Dr. Benjamin cooked. And so this was wonderful. Of who we are. Above all else, I want to encourage you to be careful with each other so you can be dangerous together. Complete your studies and now workplaces, professions, cities, and experiences. I want to remind you that Spelman is more than a college. It's a flight school, the NASA for Black women, that imparts not only intellectual skills, but the spiritual audacity to fly in and out of worlds that were not created with you in mind. When you feel weighed down, as we all do, I want to encourage you to dust off your wings, sewn by generations of Spelman women over the course of 143 friggin' years, so you can fly and be fly. Remember, too, that despite the social media slogan, trust black women, you too have to be trustworthy. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black proponents of Cop City in Atlanta's leadership class. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black woman's hand. That is our blackness and our womanness are not in themselves trustworthy. If we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power that maintain the oppressive status quo, our blackness and womanness are not themselves trustworthy if we support the occupation of black neighborhoods with so-called better trained police or remain silent about the genocide of oppressed peoples around the world funded by our tax dollars. And here, let me please shout out the incredible Spelman students and AUC siblings who have been organizing with Stop Cop City and Justice in Palestine, among many other troublemakers in this room. You all remind us that college is not a waiting room to enter the real world, but that you can start transforming that world right here, right now. It goes without saying, but let me just say it anyway. For student activists speaking out courageously for Palestine and Congo and Haiti and to stop Cop City, they should not be threatened with expulsion, loss of scholarships, or, or have public safety called on them for protesting. Too often our institutions celebrate student activists after they've graduated. <laughs> Even giving them honorary degrees. <laughs> but stifle student activism while we are enrolled. And that was Dr. Ruha Benjamin, Spelman alumni, speaking out. If you're an alumni of a university, where are you speaking out? I think that's important too. 